cranial plaque codes. Your book only has a page and a half on it. I wrote 200 pages on it. So um, it's one of the new and upcoming things in development that is not very well understood, which is why there's a lot of people investigating it right now. In terms of evolution, there are some suggestions that plaque codes have their origins with neural crest cells. But cranial plaque codes are actually different than neural crest cells, but they play similar roles in terms of um, their developmental fates. So what's the difference between a cranial plaque code and a neural crest cell? Well, their origin, for example. Cranial plaque codes don't originate from where the neural crest cells originate from. They actually originate from the ectoderm. So what's interesting about cranial plaque codes is their ectoderm, but these, there are discrete regions, this is why we call them plaque codes, they're discrete thickening regions that due to inductive signals from the neural tube, as well as the ectoderm, they will differentiate into neural tissue. So here, not even all of the ectoderm is still just going to become uh, epidermis and other types of, you know, uh, the skin. These regions will actually migrate away from the ectoderm and migrate internally, undergoing an epithelial to mesenchyme transition, very similar to the way neural crest cells migrate inward, um, due to inductive signals primarily from the ectoderm at the most dorsal region as well as the neural tube. Now, the one I did my degree on was the trigeminal plaque code. I was focusing primarily on the trigeminal plaque code. These cranial plaque codes, all with the exception of one, have pr pretty much one fate, sensory neurons. The, that, that's pretty much their, their fate, is a sensory neuron, which is similar to the dorsal root ganglion. They're sensory neurons. So there really is not multiple fates the cranial plaque codes. The only plaque code that does not generate any neurons whatsoever in this is the lens plaque code. The lens plaque code is a group of cells that contributes to the formation of the lens of the eye, but does not form any of the neurons that are part of the retina or anything else like that, or that innervate the retina and back to the uh, optic nerve. So the lens plaque code is the only non-neurogenic plaque code. All these others become sensory neurons. That's their only fate. Now, some of the, there's lots of signals going on here. They found that in each one of these regions, there are certain groups or families that are very unique to each one of these. For example, the PAX genes, or paired homeotic uh, paired genes, um, are expressed at, in different types in all of these different types. For example, the trigeminal, the one that I studied, uh, is just PAX3. And some of these others have PAX6 or PAX2 or PAX4 or whatnot. So there's different transcription factors expressed in each one of these regions. The main type of signaling that turns on these transcription factors is the Wnt signal. So each one of these regions tends to have a different FGF receptor or fibroblast growth factor, factor receptor. That is the uh, receptor to the Wnt ligand. So there's a wide variety of Wnt ligands that get released from the neural tube that will induce the overlying ectoderm to differentiate into these respective plaque codes. So they're definitely an area of great interest for developmental biologists because um, uh, of their very restricted fate. They only become sensory neurons. So it's very easy to be able to look at the signal pathways, in fact, the, the, the sequential inductive events. That's where I did most of my research is this gene leads to that, which turns on that, which turns on that, and so on and so forth, looking at the exact pathway of genetics that gets turned on at, at different times and at different rates to be able to cause these to become sensory neurons. So high degree of study in that. The otic plaque code, which is down here, actually has some inductive signaling from the underlying mesoderm. But since most of the plaque codes are in the head, there's not a lot of mesoderm induction. Most of the induction in the head comes from the neural plate and the neural tube after it forms that will cause these regions to uh, have cells that delaminate. We believe that there's a lot of things like notch delta signaling in this as well that's uh, um, responsible for neural induction and neural differentiation and whatnot. 
And the way in which they migrate is very similar to neural crest cells. They essentially go, uh, undergo an epithelial to mesenchyme transition. They actually break free from the ectoderm and will migrate internally. In fact, that's one of the things I wanted to explain. In the cranial neural crest cells, they will mix in with the placode cells. So when you get something like the trigeminal nerve forming, it's actually a mixture of both neural crest sensory neurons and trigeminal placode sensory neurons, all mixed in. You can actually see the difference between the two with certain molecular markers. But you get a mixture of both neural crest and trigeminal placode cells coming in to form some of these ganglion. Okay. So there are neural crest cells that are migrating in these particular regions from the rhombomeres in the rhomboencephalon, as we talked about, that will take part in a lot of the neurulation of the head. But these placodes have very specific sensory neurons as well, which will innervate the um, you know, glossopharyngeal nerve and other types of major cranial nerves.